At the completion of the audit, the auditor should evaluate whether total misstatements cause the financial statements to be materially misstated. So we can imagine our auditing process here. We're starting off, we're planning the audit. As we plan the audit, we consider what misstatement would be, what would be a, a material misstatement. Our goal here is to give it an opinion. Hopefully that opinion is that the financial statements are free of material misstatements. Therefore, we need to know what is or what would constitute a material misstatement. As we think about what would constitute a material misstatement, we're actually also considering what is a tolerable level of misstatement? What level of misstatement then would be tolerable at the financial statement level? Then as we go through the audit, we're breaking the audit down into individual, basically accounts, assertions, transactions. We're considering at the assertion level, uh, what would be tolerable misstatements at the assertion levels as we go through that testing. At the end of the audit process, then we're imagining now ourselves at the end, we're gonna evaluate whether the total misstatements so we're considering the potential misstatements as we go through the auditing process, uh, whether they cause the financial statements to be materially misstated. So then we're considering back at the complete financial statement level, taking the financial statements as a whole, if we add together the, the total misstatements that we're basically looking through as we go through the audit on the assertion level, would they add up to be a materially misstatement at the financial statement level as a whole if financial statements are materially misstated what if that is the case what if the financial statements what if we look at it and we say the financial statements are materially misstated is there anything we can do at that point because of course we don't really want to issue anything other than a, basically a clean opinion an unqualified opinion if we can avoid it that's basically the objective we want to be able to say hey we've got good clients We've got honest clients. The clients have said they put their their information together in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. We tested the assertions and they did indeed do as they said and put the financial statements together in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. If that's not the case, then we we're gonna request management to eliminate the material misstatement. So if we see a material misstatement, it's quite possible we could say, Hey, and, and it could be something that's not fraud or anything, of course. It could be something that's an error, some type of material misstatement. We can say, hey, we would like you to, you know, correct this, eliminate the material misstatement, make the adjustment that needs to happen and and to, to be in accordance with your only accepted accounting principles so that we can give an opinion that the financial statements are represented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. If management does not make needed adjustments, the auditor will issue a qualified or adverse opinion. And this could happen if, the, if management says, I'm not going to do that. It might be the case. Uh, again, it might not be the case where there's basically fraud happening here. The management might have a reason and say, hey, I think that it should be represented in this way for one reason or another. And we're going to say, well, look, it, we have generally accepted accounting principles and generally accepted accounting principles say that you have to put it in this format. And we're giving an opinion as to whether the financial statements are in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Your idea of, I want to report it this way because it makes sense, makes sense, but it's not generally accepted accounting principles possibly, right? So we could have that kind of, kind of issue on a one or uh, one basically issue. And if that's the case and we can't resolve it, then of course we have to re report it on our audit opinion. So if it's just one type of thing that that's the case in, then we're going to say, hey, that, you know, they're basically on generally accepted accounting principles, except this one item which is deviating from generally accepted accounting principles and possibly explain why you know management thinks it's important to to represent that and take that deviation resulting in a qualified opinion as opposed to an unqualified opinion if it's more uh, pervasive than that or if there's a lot of things going on then we have to give an adverse opinion and obviously an adverse opinion on the financial statements is, is 